The last mission of NASA's Apollo program, Apollo 17, which was executed between December 7th to 19th in the year 1972, marked the last occasion that humans stepped foot on the moon or left low Earth orbit. While Command Module Pilot Ronald Evans orbited above, Commander Gene Cernan and Lunar Module Pilot Harrison Schmidt conducted a lunar landing. Ever since then, we have been exhausting resources to re-establishing our presence back on the moon, and after extensive periods of trial runs and tests, the world appears to be poised to return to the moon with NASA's Artemis program. The Artemis program is a robotic and human moon exploration mission led by NASA, with three other partner agencies. The European Space Agency, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. The Artemis program is built on and around key components, such as the Space Launch System, Orion Spacecraft, Lunar Gateway Space Station, and the commercial human landing systems, including Starship Human Landing Systems. It is also incorporated with a long-term goal to build a permanent base camp on the Moon and support manned trips to Mars. Although the Artemis program was officially launched in 2017 during the Trump administration, many of its parts, including the Orion spacecraft, were created during and after the previous Constellation program from 2005 to 2010. But in recent days, NASA has stepped up its efforts to send the first woman and person of color to the moon, with the organization seeking to use cutting-edge technologies to study more of the lunar surface than before. The agency is very close to establishing the first long-term human robotic presence on and around the moon thanks to a number of partnerships with prominent commercial and international partners. The launch, which was moved to September 3rd due to certain technical issues, was originally slated for August 29th. Our video today explores how NASA plans to colonize Mars with the Moon to Mars Artemis program. Without much ado, let's launch right into it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. In order to learn more about our solar system, our planet, and the planets beyond, we may need to study the Moon which is a scientific treasure trove full of intriguing secrets. NASA plans to use the Moon's unique vantage point as a scientific platform to observe the universe as a whole, study the Sun, and look back at Earth. The discovery of water on the Moon, as well as potential quantities of rare Earth elements, holds great promise for both scientific and human explorations. NASA's plans to launch the massive Space Launch System rocket from the Kennedy Space Center on a test mission to the Moon on August 29th were postponed for at least a few days after engineers were unable to solve an engine problem. The inability of one of the four Space Launch System core stage engines to reach the appropriate temperature for launch led the launch director of the Artemis 1 mission to abort the liftoff, which had been scheduled for August 29th. With only 40 minutes remaining in the countdown, flight controllers requested a halt while they assessed the issue. As a matter of fact, in the days leading up to the scheduled launch, engineers were resolving a number of problems. First, on Saturday, the 27th, lightning strikes at the pad originally raised some questions, but officials later declared that neither the vehicle nor the capsule, nor any ground equipment, had been harmed. The process of fueling the core stage with its hydrogen fuel was then hindered by a 45-minute weather delay that occurred early on Monday morning, where a leak was also found, but it was fixed. After the trip was canceled on August 29th, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, a former Space Shuttle astronaut, noted that the decision to postpone the launch was evidence that the rocket was a very complex machine with a complex system and that everything had to function first. The flight is intended to be the first step toward eventually returning humans to the moon's surface, which might happen as early as 2025. Earlier in August, the 30-story tall Space Launch System rocket with an uncrewed Orion spacecraft atop it was carried out to the same storied launch facility utilized by the powerful Saturn V during the Apollo moonshots that came to an end in 1972. 
This maiden mission of Artemis, which is named after Apollo's twin sister, is a test flight for the gear required to return to the moon for extended stays and more scientific investigation. The Artemis program, which is anticipated to cost $93 billion in total, promises to refocus NASA's long-term human spaceflight goals, clearing the way for the eventual establishment of a crewed facility near the moon's south pole and crewed flights to Mars. The vehicle that will actually land on the moon's surface, however, will not be part of the initial Artemis mission. Elon Musk's SpaceX has been tasked with developing a lunar variant of its Starship to transport astronauts to the surface. The vehicle has yet to be orbitally tested. Gateway, a deep space way station for astronauts to and from a future moon base, is another component of the original Artemis program that is still in the works. Stretched versions of the Space Shuttle's solid rocket boosters, which were last used more than 10 years ago, as well as four RS-25 engines that were previously employed on shuttle missions, are included in the Space Launch System. The upper stage of the rocket will be propelled by an engine first created in the late 1950s. For both the SLS core stage and upper stage, Boeing is the main contractor. According to Noel Zietzman, lead engineer for Boeing's Space Launch System program, Engineers used the foundations and essentials of the Saturn V and Space Shuttle eras to develop the massive rocket. The command module from the Apollo period is reminiscent of the cone-shaped Orion spacecraft, which will carry up to four people into lunar orbit on upcoming missions. Finally, an Orion-mounted European service module will provide future crews with propulsion, energy, water, oxygen and climate control in a manner similar to that of Apollo's service module. Orion will be sent into what is known as a distant retrograde orbit during the six-week Artemis I test mission, an oblong loop that will take it barely 62 miles from the surface of the moon at one point and well past the moon at another. According to Mike Hawes, Orion program manager for Lockheed Martin, which is developing the capsule, some life support systems, crew support equipment, or a docking system won't be used on the maiden flight of Artemis I's Orion. In its place, three mannequins with vibration and radiation sensors will be used instead. According to the program manager, getting the radiation profile and having an extended exposure in this specific lunar orbit is incredibly critical to the program. Nonetheless, four people will be flown by NASA aboard Artemis II in 2024, while the program's first landing is scheduled for Artemis III one year later. The initiative will eventually send the first woman and the first person of color to the moon, according to the space agency. However, Artemis and Constellation, its precursor, have endured years of delays and cost overruns, which was forecasted by a NASA Inspector General assessment published last year, which predicted that the first Artemis moon landing would exceed its timetable by a number of years. Whether or not this is true, the only reliable factor is time. Following the launch, Artemis 1 will enter low Earth orbit, where Orion's service module will deploy solar panels before propelling itself into a higher orbit in preparation for a four-day journey to lunar orbit. NASA wants to be able to extract water ice, which has been found in proven depth in polar craters that never see sunlight and is a vital resource for drinking, breathing oxygen, and ultimately producing rocket fuel during a future landing and as crewed missions to Mars would be simpler to launch from a lunar base due to the moon's low gravity. Such expeditions could prove to be essential stepping stones. Thirteen locations close to the moon's south pole have just been named as potential landing sites for the Artemis III surface mission in a few years by NASA. These areas were picked due to their accessibility for landing, exposure to sunshine for solar power generation, and potential proximity to permanently shadowed ice deposits. David Crane, a lunar geologist at the Center for Lunar Science and Exploration in Houston, Texas, claims that the lunar south pole is an incredibly exceptional geologic topography 
that will reveal a great deal about the moon's evolution. However, a polar mission will be unique in that it marks a change from Apollo, which stationed 12 men at locations all closer to the equator of the moon. Because of the low sun angle in the south, according to Bethany Ullman, Associate Director of the Keck Institute for Space Studies at the California Institute of Technology, the terrain looks a bit more amazing. Elman is the team leader for Lunar Trailblazer, a robotic mission that will provide precise maps of those persistently shadowed crater locations that may hold ice. She claims that the landscape in the South Pole is similar to the Apollo landing locations closer to the equator and believes that the landing systems are better now than they were in the 1970s. Lunar Trailblazer was scheduled to launch in 2019. So, there you have it, our video of the day which explores how NASA plans to colonize Mars with the Moon to Mars Artemis program. If you enjoyed this video, watch also the next video on your screen which talks about the terrifying discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope on Proxima b. As always, be sure to like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more exciting future videos.